going on YouTube get stick customs again and I'm out here playing with the Weber kettle grills again big surprise <laughs> uh, I've got some charcoal going I'm gonna be using the uh, slow and sear and the dripping griddle to uh, bring up the temperature so I can season the Chinese made rotisserie I want to burn all that nasty stuff off of there uh, the reason I want to do the uh, the slow and sear and the dripping griddle is because it helps keep the uh, kettle clean you can see down in there it's really not that nasty it doesn't have all the grease and junk and everything in there uh, plus it gives me the opportunity to use indirect heat I want the heat going over and around the chicken as it's cooking but I also want to see how the uh, rotisserie is going to work with the dripping griddle uh, I've heard arguments against buying the dripping griddle a couple of youtubers out there I can't remember their names off the top of my head saying is the dripping griddle and the slow ones here really necessary you can do the same thing with tin foil yeah you can do the same thing with tin foil I've done it plenty of times in fact I think I have a video showing me using tin foil for the slow ones here and the dripping griddle problem with that is you're going to I'm sweating it's hot out here you're going to go through an awful lot of tin foil in a couple of seasons enough to justify buying both of these items from adrenaline I'll try to leave a remember to leave a link down in the bottom uh, another thing is when you get done with it you're going to throw it away you're going to add to the trash that we throw away in this society and I just think that having these two items saves me from adding to all that trash so that's my justification for using the drip and griddle in the slow ones here plus I like them they're cool <laughs> adrenaline's just come out with a 2.0 version of the slow ones here not sure how I like that I might have to get one to do a review on it but apparently they've got a removable water trough and instead of uh, welding the basket together they've riveted it and I'm not too sure I like that I don't know but who am I to say who am I to judge okay but let's get going I'm gonna go ahead and put the charcoal in here and get it going get it nice and hot and see if this thing holds temperature I might even swap the lids out to get a comparison between the sealed and the unsealed let's go burn all that stuff off from the last bit. I cut a hole in the seal, the whatever you call it, for the Weber Smoky Mountain to help seal it off along with the felt along the bottom. And I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this over here. I think I've got a piece of tin that I can cut and fold over roll over to seal it in i figured that the uh, weight of the lid will hold it in place but let's go with it right now i've got that wide open that vent wide open and let's see do i have the bottom vent wide open yep bottom vents wide open get that up to temperature and while that's going i'm going to work on this one i need to Cut the bolts off on the bottom because they're froze up. I don't like a wobbly handle. That just drives me crazy. Uh, I've also purchased several of these. I'm going to drill a hole in the side of the Weber kettle so that I can pass my leads for my temperature gauge when I'm cooking to make sure that the meat gets to the temperature I want it. Uh, one of my lead is damaged and so it's not giving me correct temperatures when I'm cooking steak and chicken like that 
and uh, I'm going to have to buy a new one. And I believe that the reason for that is because I've been passing it underneath, the, over the lip and underneath the, the lid and it's potentially damaging the lead. And so I figure this will alleviate that. So I'm going to drill that out. I'm going to cut the handles, the bolts for the handles off, replace those bolts, see if I can tighten that up. And then I've got this so that I can do the modifications. And I'll show you how I do that modification, how I bend the handle. Because I didn't do it in the last one. And I'll leave a link to it up here. <laughs> Remember, when using power tools, so let's get started. on the side of caution. Always wear ear protection, eye protection, and even though it's blazing hot out here, I've got my welding jacket on to protect my arms. And I'll just try to keep the sparks away from my skinny white legs. <laughs> after I took it off and went and got some parts for it this is a press fit the handle assembly comes as one unit but I got some carriage bolts and I've got a file I can file out the holes on here to square them up so that the carriage bolts will stay in there don't know what I'm going to do about the uh, holes in here might have to try to file that out as well we'll see but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna paint just gonna square out these holes for the lag bolts get it started ah, come on that simple and put the carriage bolt in there see if it fits And it does. In place. Paint should be dry. Let's try putting this back together. Tighten this up with a 7 16. No more wobble. Now, if my measurements are correct, this should be a one and three eighths hole saw. So, let's see how much damage so I can do. This in the right spot. So, right about there should do it. It's going to be high enough. bit appears to have wandered a bit. Part I've all been waiting for. How do I bend the rod to give you more swing on the clean out blades? I'm fixing to show you. This is a cheap little vise. 
that I bought from <clears throat> Harbor Freight. And all I'm going to do is Now you need to bring the shaft here back in line with here. Well, tighten it down. I need to bolt this thing down to keep it from moving. Like I said, this is just a cheap vice. got a bend like that whereas before it came out this way I decided to go ahead and reuse all the old pieces they're not rotted out they're not really rusted that badly the only part that was rusted and where did it go was this piece here just a normal piece of steel and it was rusted and pitted and I cleaned it up on the wire wheel and then gave it a couple of coats with Rust-Oleum and this is only a couple of years old so it might not be a bad idea if you buy a brand new kettle and you have to put it together yourself spray this down with some kind of rust inhibitor something that's going to be high temp and uh, because when it rusts it wears away the enamel it's like sandpaper so just precautionary measure that I think wouldn't be a bad idea I didn't show you how to take this apart because I showed you in this video up here all right but I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together and uh, we've already seen how the arm is bent put this oops, back together There we go. This goes on here like this. Yeah. Like this. There we go. And then this little tab goes through right this notch right here line it up kind of sort of halfway maybe give it a little bit of friendly persuasion and you turn it until that tab clicks into the slot That should be yeah. right here. It needs to be bent in to give it a, let it get some swing to it. That way you get a nice full flow. You're not going to get complete coverage unless you do some drastic modifications to the the arm. But it gives you, you enough that it's going to sweep it out of the way. But I still have more things to do. To this grill but these are the main ones that I wanted to do 
gives you an idea. Still need to clean it up a little bit more. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Leave comments down below and let me know what you think. If you like this, if you want to see more videos like this, that's the place to let me know. Hit that little red subscribe button for me if you wouldn't mind and uh, check out some of these videos. You might find something you like. And for now, I'll talk to you later. Bye.